I'm doing a review on a buddy of mine's holster. Uh, I say buddy, he's he's an Instagram acquaintance. He's a guy that uh, you know we both kind of follow each other. But basically, what it is is he's a custom holster manufacturer, and I got linked up with him just through Instagram. In that process, I was looking for a good holster that I could I could use. Uh, I had used a bunch. I used Bravo concealment. I've used uh, Galco. I've used. Uh, you know, I mean, you name it, I've, I've used it. And nearly every single holster that I've gotten, I've had to modify in one form or fashion. Some more than others. Basically, what I found is that if a holster was comfortable, uh, like Alien Gear was super comfortable for me to carry every day, it just simply wasn't functional for me to fight in. Like I said, when it comes to holsters, I've used all different kinds. One of the kinds that I've used in the past is just a half shell holster. So, a half shell holster would be, you can see from this design here, that this is, um, this is two shells. This is, you know, a shell on the outside, a shell on the inside. A uh, half shell holster would be one that would just be the outside, and then it would just merely have, like, a padded fabric or leather or something like that up against your body. Uh, Alien Gear is, is one that makes that. I'm not knocking Alien Gear. Not everybody makes a holster. In fact, nobody makes a holster that's specifically designed for combatives, uh, really to my knowledge up until now. Uh, so they, they did a good job. I wore Alien Gear for years. It was a good holster. The problem that I found was is based on the hooks, based on the setup, based on everything that was going on with it, although it was super comfortable and it concealed fairly well, um, the problem that I had was, is as guys go fighting over that weapon, the, ho the hooks get all twisted up, the entire holster gets ripped out, even by the user. I wrote an article on this, it's actually up on my website as well as uh, on Spotter Up, that kind of highlighted all of this. But one of the things that I never got around to doing, because I wanted to take some more time and do some more uh, kind of testing on it, was... I never did a video on the holster itself. So this is what it is. This is made by Zulu Ops. And right now he's just got a carbon fiber uh, type finish on it. But really um, you can have any kind of finish on it that you want. He can even have logos and things like that printed on it. It's actually pretty cool. One of the first things that I wanted was I wanted a, a holster that was two shells that had a, a cant on that forward end to help kind of you know as we're sitting here like this it actually helps press that hole or press that uh, that pistol grip into the body a little bit help with concealment one of the next things that I wanted was I wanted a hook that actually had a good positive retention now I had sent him a couple of different designs and photos of hooks uh, to actually latch onto the belt but uh, he actually sent me something that was far better than what I had sent him and what it is, is we've got hooks here that are actually pretty thick and stout. But one of the other things that I want you to kind of see here, not sure if I can do this like this or not, but the way that this hook is set up, there's a recessed area for, that, for the actual hook itself here to slide down into. Um, I call that a retention ramp, although he maybe called something else. That's just what I refer to it as. But basically what it is, is when the belt is in this area here, let me see if I can show it to you from this angle. When the belt is in this area and it actually slides down and put, puts pressure here, even if it lifts the hook up, it's not going to lose retention. Uh, like I said, one of the problems that I've had with a couple of different manufacturers, a couple of different uh, holster manufacturers, was the fact that not that they didn't retain the gun, but that they didn't retain the holster also. In the middle of the fight, when you're grappling, you're rolling around, you got two guys fighting over one gun inside the holster, inevitably what happens is, is as you go to rip that gun free, if it's actually gripped down tight enough on the gun, but the, the hooks themselves suck, then what ends up happening is, is you rip the whole gun out with the holster, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because as it's sitting in here, it's actually blocking all of my controls. And I've had this happen numerous times. I've, I've got video and photos of actual force-on-force -force encounters in a class where this has happened with various different holsters. So it is something that we've actually seen in, in real-life con conditions, in real-life force-on-force -force conditions. So 
The next thing that I wanted was I wanted a pad, um, a pad that was optional. Based on your dress, one of the things that, that I almost inevitably end up having to do if you carry appendix is you have all of these, I'll just use the, the far side of the holster, you have all these little edges on the holster here that end up pressing up against certain spots in your body. The more that you grapple, the more sensitive those areas become, and it really becomes a pain. Now, if you're just going out and you're wearing your gun to church or you're wearing it you know, to, the, to work or whatever, it may not be a big deal for you because you're not wearing it for prolonged periods of time. But I don't believe in having anything that you cannot train in consistently. If I am going to have a holster, I want something that I can actually train in and train in all the time uh, without ending up with all kinds of bruises around my hip area and stuff where this thing is constantly digging in. The whole purpose of us going through all this and my whole basis for everything is to be able to train continuously all the time. Um, if you've got a holster that doesn't allow you to do that, it's not much good and there's not a whole lot of point in training in it. So I wanted to have something like that. So what we did was we came up with some Velcro, soft side Velcro here so that it would be optional if you don't want to use the pad. You just don't use it. You just put it in. No problem. It doesn't cost you anything. But if you do want to use the pad, we've got some closed cell um, you know, padding here. It's not, not very thick, but it does its job. And of course you got the hook side uh, on, on this side here. Now the purpose of this pad is twofold. Number one, obviously, you know, it's, it's padding and stuff like that, but it also is to press the holster out somewhat from your body and that helps press that, the, the grip in a little tighter to the body to help that grip to keep from, uh, from printing but it also helps distribute the load across your body. Now, as we're sitting here like this, I don't just have one, one spot that it's, you know, it's going to be digging in because as I move around and as I grapple, this thing is going to be moving all around and digging in at different areas. But when it all comes down to it, I need to distribute the force that this thing is pressing up against my hip, I need to distribute that over a wider area. And that's kind of the purpose of the pad also, is to just redistribute that area or that force instead of just kind of a pinpoint little area, is to redistribute it over a larger area, a larger surface area, so that it's not digging in and bruising me in one section. And it's worked out great. It even worked out to the point where Mike over at Zulu Ops uh, started outfitting all of his holsters with pads as well. So uh, that was kind of a, a good thing. But the holster itself, now this is going to kind of come from a preference thing. You can get these pads, uh, to my knowledge, and you could talk to Mike about this, but you can get these pads in different sizes. There's one that's maybe about kind of half the size. It's about that big that fits on, and it certainly does its job. Um, for me, what I'm looking for as somebody who is, is predominantly looking around the grappling arena, what I want is, I want something that is basically going to overlap like so. I'm not sure if you can see that real well with the lighting, but basically what it is, is as I'm sitting here and this thing is moving, I want this pad to be able to fold up over the edges. Don't forget that this thing is going to be sitting right in an area where my body is bending in multiple different angles. So I've got my leg sticking up here, and if I hold this up, and I hold that pad up against my jeans, you can see that as my leg comes up, that pad actually curves around the pants. By the same token, as I'm bending down here, that corner right there, that pad is folding up and it's kind of protecting my junk from getting stabbed by an edge on the holster or anything like that. So I want the, the pad itself a little bit larger so that it actually helps to fold around and wrap around when my body is contouring under movement. So again, I'm coming from a BJJ perspective. Maybe if you're doing Taekwondo or whatever it is you're doing, maybe that's not so much of an issue for you. But for me, it was a huge issue because I got to be able to put my body in different positions without being impeded by my weapon. So the other thing that I wanted was I wanted a holster that had a good positive snap to it. Now I'm not talking about retention in the sense of being able to hold the gun. What I'm talking about is when I press this in, I want that snap. All right? 
I want it to not just be held in by friction. I want a good positive snap in there. And the reason for that is, is because as I've had this thing in here before, inevitably in the middle of the fight, you got two guys going for this gun, or you got one guy maybe that's going and gets his hand on your gun and you don't necessarily realize it. What I want is I want a pull and then a jerk free. I don't want it to be friction where it's just slowly pulling out and I get no positive feedback through my body that my weapon has been taken. I want to actually have that force that's actually pulling on my pants as that as that gun comes free and then all of a sudden it snaps loose and that right there will transmit through to my body so that I know that my weapon has just come free and forces me to now change my priority. If you guys follow my channel or you, you watch me on Patreon, you understand that where I'm coming from on priority is huge because it's the basis of everything. Right? Punching somebody is fine, but if the priority is to deal with a, a weapon that's in play, then you better deal with that. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. Again, grappling is awesome, but if there's a weapon in play, that becomes first priority. By the same token, position over submission, things like that. So we have orders of priority within the fight. I need to know, it's critically important that I know that the priority of the fight has just changed because my weapon has come free and I may or may not have even been aware that the guy had his hand on the gun. So that was something that was important to me as well. So you guys can kind of read the article, go through and, uh, and check that out. Like I said, it's on my website in the blog section, but it's also on um, uh, Spotter Up as well. So you guys can kind of check that out. Um, all in all, it's, this was something that I collaborated with, with Mike on. We went back and forth many times, uh, sent holsters back, marked it up, sent him photos, talked on the phone, email, things like that. And what we finally came up with was something that, that is, quite honestly, in my opinion, the most comfortable and most functional holster for combatives that I've used uh, to date. So this is what we kind of came up with. It took us seven, eight iterations to be able to get to where we're at. Now, I'll go ahead and mention this last feature. So the last thing that I wanted to kind of mention was typically holsters that are designed for being carried out or inside the waistband will have like a little wing on the outside that actually sits up against the body. And it kind of helps keep the gun itself away from... Um, your skin and kind of keep sweat, things like that from going down in there. That wasn't so much of a concern for me, all right? My, my guns are a tool, all right? I, I don't care if they get a little bit of wear and tear, if the finish comes off a little bit here. I don't care. It's, it's a gun. It's a tool. I don't go out there and polish my hammers and screwdrivers either, all right? So what I wanted was I wanted that wing taken off, all right? And the reason for that was is because as I put this thing in, My ability to come in here and to move is not going to be impeded by that uh, by the holster itself. What I want is I want that good positive snap, and now the gun will hold that holster in in the the position that it needs to be in. But once I get to the point where I'm employing that gun, now I'm, I'm sitting on the ground, I'm, I'm in I'm entangled into a fight. Maybe I'm even standing up and all of a sudden the gun comes free. Now, I do not want anything impeding my movement. I want to be able to fully move up and down, back and forth, being able to hinge at the waistline without, um, without anything impeding my movement. So, having the gun in there, I know the gun is there, I can feel it, but once it comes free, I need to be able to move 100% and still be able to utilize my weapon as it's designed to. So that was another thing that I had kind of featured. So all that being said, the holster itself is good and positive. I'm just using a standard leather belt. Some of you guys who use, you know, tactical ninja belts and stuff, good on you. It will fit those also. Uh, but just with a good, solid, you know, sturdy leather belt, this thing has worked great. If you do carry in the 4 o'clock position, go get training because I don't think you should. But it will work back there. Um, you carry three o'clock it will work there all the same features it will work in any kind of position so I wanted to do a little review on um, on the holster itself I'll post a link 
in the description to uh, to Mike's email address. You can contact him. I don't think he has a website, but he does uh, a good job of communicating back and forth with his clients on email. Or you can uh, check out, uh, I think it's Zulu Op Solutions on Instagram. So I'll post that link as well. So you guys train hard.